what's up? It's... <laughs> I hate that. That's awful. Even as a joke, that's terrible. I'm never going to do that again. Hey, everybody. How's it going? How are you doing? I hope everything's going well with you. My name is Gretchen, and this is Cover Art. This is a series where I talk about video games I'm currently playing while doing my makeup at the same time. Usually my makeup is inspired by said video games. If you're ever curious as to what I'm using, I will list everything in the description below. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and hop right into it. So today I wanted to tell you about a game called Bloodborne. Some people might be like, why are you going to talk about Bloodborne and not Dark Souls first? Why wouldn't you talk about Dark Souls first? Well, because I haven't played Dark Souls. I played Dark Souls 3, but I haven't finished it. I kind of stopped. I've played Bloodborne. 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 I've played Bloodborne and I've finished Bloodborne and I've started New Game Plus on it. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So Bloodborne is an action RPG that came out in 2015 and was developed by a company called From Software. I think it was published by Sony Entertainment. From Software is very popular for having done another series of games called Dark Souls, as well as a game called Demon Souls. I almost forgot to clip my hair back. It would have been very difficult. In Bloodborne, you play as a character who is known as a hunter. They are pretty much a speechless character, the kind that, you know, you just control, you interact with people, but they don't ever respond to anything that anyone's saying. They're just kind of a blank slate for you to mess with. I've never done my eyebrows before because I've never felt the need to do my eyebrows before, but why not? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. You know, no harm in that. So you play as a speechless character. You are in a city called the city of Yarnum, and it's just this, honestly, it's this gross old dilapidated city. Um, as soon as you start the game, you're going to get some really big, like, gothic, dark art style vibes from it. It is very dark. It is very grotesque, I should say, I guess. Not in a, like, way that'll turn you off, but it definitely really leans into the old gothic architecture and art style. It's assumed that your character has come to Yarnum in the hopes of receiving some sort of maybe medical treatment. Treatment, Boy, I cannot talk today. That's going to be tough. In search of some kind of medical treatment for some, you know, who knows what illness, Yarnum is very famous for a type of medical advancement that they have really leaned into and curated called blood ministration. It's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's heavily adopted and used by the church in Yarnum. And basically it's just the sharing of blood from the, I don't know, the like church clergy people to like heal people. So everybody's just kind of sharing their blood all around the place. Like I said, it's kind of gross. It's, <laughs> it's definitely a weird and unique concept, but that's, that's Yarnum. However, tonight you have unfortunately stumbled upon something called the hunt. Now during the hunt, normal people just kind of, they, they lock themselves away. They don't come out of their houses because citizens who have become beast-like or just completely deranged are now roaming the streets and killing anything and whoever they see. Um, you can kind of tell that there's some weird darkness to it all that, I mean, obviously, again, gothic dark vibes, but there's something strange about this city because why have all of the citizens, or at least a good portion of the citizens, become deranged and like beast-like and basically unintelligible and all that. So your character becomes a hunter. Again, there, there's really no say in it. You're just a hunter now. That's what you do. And you're tasked with keeping the streets of Yarnum safe and keeping the citizens safe in a way you never really interact with any like normal citizens. You just kind of interact with them through their doors and their homes. But you are now in charge of helping take down the beast-like citizens that can no longer be saved and are just stuck in how they are. So you are now a hunter. You don't talk. You interact with people, but you don't talk. You roam the streets. You kill beasts. 
And that's just your job now. That's just your deal. You go through different sections of the city and the surrounding area. You don't have a like mini map or anything like that. You just kind of unlock passages to new areas and travel through the game that way. Usually you'll hit an area, you'll hit a boss for the general area, you'll proceed to the next area and so on and so forth until, you know, the end of the game. <laughs> it sounds really simple and ultimately it is, but it can get a little complicated. You start to pick up items and notes and things that will teach you more about what's going on in the city, how this came to be, kind of start to figure out what's happened to these citizens. A lot of people would praise Yarnum as like an advancement as far as medicine went because they could go there and get their weird illnesses or ailments cured through the help of the healing church and this blood ministration practice that I've already told you about. So ultimately you're going through, you're taking care of the beasts, but also you're kind of trying to figure out, all right, what's going on? What's happening here? Why is everybody going crazy? And what's the church up to? So if you're familiar with the Dark Souls series at all, you'll know it's basically a game exactly like Dark Souls, aside from theme and location and world. Um, different world, different, you know, premise and setting, but the mechanics are essentially all the same. Sorry, my eyeliner pencil just kind of like fell apart. Not sure what's going on there. Is it a reflection of my life? Who knows? <laughs> I don't, I don't know anymore. So yes, it's very much like Dark Souls. It is the same company. It's the same director after all, excluding Dark Souls 2. But if you're familiar with that series at all, then you're going to have a good grasp on how Bloodborne interacts. There is a ton of customizability when it comes to your hunter and the things that you can do. Um, you'll defeat enemies throughout the game. Oh, I just stabbed myself in the eye. You'll defeat enemies throughout the game in the different areas you travel to, you will rest or go back to a to a lamp, which is what will take you back to the Hunter's Dream, which is kind of like your home base. Um, you'll be able to collect the souls of the enemies you've killed and you'll use that to level up. Now, should you die while you're out there and hunting the beasts, what will happen is you will drop all of the souls you have collected. You will respawn in the Hunter's Dream and then be able to travel to any of the open areas you have. So you do have the option to try and go back and reclaim the souls that you've lost. If you die again before you're able to reclaim your lost souls, however, they are gone forever. So if you if you die, you beef it, you drop all the souls you've collected, maybe it was like two levels worth, one level worth, whatever, obviously you're gonna wanna go back and get those. But if you're not careful, the game will punish you. And if you die again trying to get them, then they're gone. Sorry, guess you gotta go kill more guys and get more souls if you wanna level up. In the different areas you go to, anytime you leave that area and come back to it entirely, so let's say you go through an area, you clear it, and you go back to your lamp, and you travel somewhere else. The next time you come back to that area, all of the enemies will respawn. Sorry, I kicked my camera. So anytime you travel back to an area, you're gonna get the same enemies in the same locations, and they're gonna do the same cycles over again. So you're really not like at a loss for experience or souls in this case. Um, there are always going to be options for you to go through. Obviously the beginning areas are a little bit easier because obviously you will be able to go through and just farm once you get a little overpowered for the areas, but then that's, that's not as fun and you won't level up as quickly if you're just farming low level areas, you know? You will collect a bunch of different types of weapons throughout the game. And when I say a bunch, I really mean it. There are so many different kinds of weapons that you can collect and you can upgrade them each in their own way um, with different items and resources you can collect throughout the game. You can level up your own hunter and there are a bunch of different attributes and aspects that you can level up like your health pool, your physical strength, your dexterity, all that good stuff. Obviously, a lot of people like to strategize and really hammer home one or two attributes and really focus on that. Um, different weapons will have different stats based on these different attributes. So while one weapon might rely heavily on your strength, another weapon might rely heavily on your dexterity, things like that. As you are traveling through the game, you will meet other characters, whether face-to-face -face or 
through their doors as obviously they're trying to protect themselves through the night, not trying to get mixed up with the hunt and the citizens who have become deranged. Um, there are little side quests that you can do for certain characters. Like in the very beginning, there's a little girl that you can help find her, try and help her find her mom and her dad. Her mom went out looking for her dad on the night of the hunt and now she's been left all alone. So you kind of help her out and say, okay, now I'll find your parents. I'm sure there's nothing wrong there. There are different safe havens you can even direct people of Yarnum to. One safe haven you can direct people to is called Yusefka's Clinic. She is a doctor in the area who is really well versed in the, you know, traditional blood administration. She has her own secret blood recipe for her own patients, I guess. I don't know. It's very weird. Once you get past how weird the concept and the settings are, it is a very fun game where, you know, if you're into that weird kind of stuff, then boy, it's perfect for you. You can send people to Yusefsu's clinic if you so choose, if you find people who aren't totally deranged and need a safe place to go. You could also send them over to this chapel area with this like weird blind hobbit of a, of a person who is very awkward. They're like, yeah, just send people here. Like I'll take care of them. They'll be safe from the hunt or whatever. I mean, is anyone really safe at this point in the game? I don't think so. Your fellow citizens and neighbors have become deranged beasts and literally attack anything on sight. After a certain point in the game, there's really no one left to save. <laughs> if you can believe it, then you're just kind of, you know, you have who you have and that's that. You can have different interactions. These characters can meet different fates depending on what you decide to do. This is a game that will autosave. Like pretty much once you make a decision, that's that. There's nothing to do about it. You can't just like save scum and go back and try and change a decision you made or change an outcome for someone's possibly untimely demise. And I will say this game is just kind of sad in general. There's not, if you want something with happy endings, not gonna get it. <laughs> not in this one. But it is very interesting. The story is really interesting. This game doesn't really provide you lore unless you go out looking for it. So there is story. There's like a ton of story to this game, but for the most part you're given the tasks of going and defeating beasts and leveling up and just kind of riding that wave for a while until you get to the end game. But a lot of the times you have to go looking for the story and like read notes and all that kind of stuff. I myself got really used to just going onto the wiki. <laughs> I got out of the game's wiki and just read a bunch of stuff because there's a lot that you can miss and there's a lot that you could just never stumble upon. It's a huge world. There's a lot to explore. There's a lot to go through. Um, and there are a lot of different characters. A lot of different characters with a lot of different storylines. All these storylines are pretty much directly affected by the decisions that you make and how you interact with them or help them or don't help them. Um, I keep saying there's a lot, really compared to some of the other games I've talked about recently, there it's it's pretty narrow pool of interactable characters, but at the same time they it's heavy. It weighs really heavy, and um, the few people you're able to interact with, sometimes if you can't save them or if you've done something that's irreparable, I mean that's that. There's no going back. Like I said, you don't even have to worry about saving the game because the game is gonna punish you. Your actions have consequences. Actions have consequences. Isn't that fun? Just like in real life. Just like in real life. One thing I really do like about this game is like it's got really big Eldritch Horror vibes. Like not specifically directly ripping off of like Cthulhu and not like HP Lovecraft. They've got their own thing going on but it's definitely like these are the great old ones and, you know, they'll mess you up. They'll mess the whole world up. There are a lot of different like organizations and factions in the game. Again, I'm saying a lot in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that many. You've got the Healing Church, which you never really align with the Healing Church. You're just kind of like constantly surrounded by their presence in the city of Yarnum because they were like, they were like the hot shit, right? They were the guys that you'd come to if you were sick. Like they, they 
really helped Yarnum prosper for a little while. You know, until their citizens started going insane and becoming beasts and losing their absolute minds, which, oh, I wonder how that happened. You guys are all sharing blood. How did that happen? Hmm. Yeah, that one doesn't take a whole lot to figure out, but here we are. There's another faction you can align with called the Vile Bloods, for instance. Um, they have a whole thing going on. It's like an optional area you can go to and visit them if you really want. They've got their own side stories. I mean, it's, their whole thing is wild. I mean, they're literally called the Vile Bloods. So if you can imagine this, <laughs> the church kind of saw that they were doing their own thing when it came to blood administration. And they said, ooh, but they're taking our business away. So we should probably make them out to be like bad people <laughs> so that people come to us instead of them. So they got the name Vile Bloods. The church trying to demonize them. If you think about it, actually pretty similar to the way that the old um, real church, a real Catholic church, demonized uh, women who were able to make beer and ale on their own. Do you know, this is a totally random fun fact. Witches were actually just women who learned how to make beer at home without, you know, the help of God um, or like God's secret recipe or whatever. Typically back in like the feudal era or like medieval times, if you wanted beer, if you wanted ale, you went to a monastery and you got it from a monk because, you know, they they had the secret from God or whatever. Well, women who needed to support their families, you know, eventually learned how to make the beer and ale themselves from passing monks and things like that. Um, and, you know, made a side business out of it. So then the church and these monks were like, that's not cool. That's our dig. So in real life, they demonized women who were able to you know, support themselves and their families and make beer and said, um, well, we can make ale because we have God on our side. They can make ale because they have Satan on their side. Um, obviously I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that's kind of how it shook out. <laughs> that's the, um, little, little known history on witches in, uh, just the grand scheme of things. But that was a huge, that was a huge thing totally unrelated note. Anyways, <laughs> so that's Bloodborne. You're a hunter, you go through, you fight these strange citizens over and over again. You find out how did this happen to this city? How can I stop it? Can you stop it? Can you stop the cycle? I mean, in part, you're dealing with a bunch of great old ones, some like Cthulhu-like beings. Can you really stop it? I don't know. Play the game and find out. <laughs> I was very intimidated by these games actually because they just straight like scared me like the the thought of having to fight these things over and over again and it's not like it's huge on jump scares it's not like it's that scary actually it's just very dark it's very morbid and it's very punishing like if you die two times in a row and you don't collect your souls in between then you're out however much it took you to get all of those resources so it's a fun game. I really like it. Obviously, I'm into New Game Plus, which means I've already beaten the game once and now I've got a beefed up character for my second round of the game. Um, it is really fun discovering all these little bits and pieces to the area and also the DLC is really good. It is really good and it is hard. It is incredibly hard. Some of the hardest uh, boss fights I have ever had in any video game I have ever played. So do what you will with that information. Very challenging, but very fun. Yeah, if you can get past like being fearful like I was, <laughs> it's a really fun game. I really should play Dark Souls, probably. I hear a lot of good things. People really like it. People are really into these games, like really into these games. Um, and I think for good reason, they're really fun, challenging and fun. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had a great time. I did. I had a great time talking about Bloodborne. Let me know if you try it out. Let me know if you played it or if you are interested in playing it and what you think. Let me know what you think of the makeup look I decided to go with. I tried to do something really grungy because Bloodborne is really grungy. <laughs> as much as they're obsessed with blood, it's not like it's a vibrant red color. It's always like super dirty looking, which is just gross. <laughs> But anyways, thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day ahead of you and I'll see you next time. Bye.